Uh, this is our third lesson on the depreciation uh, topic. Um, going back to the question that we would have taken down in our notes copy, um, we're now ready to move on from this table here at the top. And like we had looked at previously for the revaluation chapter, now we are going to start looking at the accounts and how do we write up the accounts. Um, this table here is, is only used um, really for workings. Uh, we use it at the start to get all our figures and once we've done that, the rest of the question is quite easy. Um, all we have here, and I've highlighted it in bold, um, I've covered in this, uh, I suppose, top left hand uh, side of the table because this information was only used for calculations previously. Um, these are the vehicles that we owned before the question actually started. So we purchased this in 2012, 2013, and 2014, and the question starts in 2016 with our 2016 paragraph. So these are purchased before the question started. Therefore, these, uh, I suppose, vehicles and the fridge that was attached to vehicle number one, uh, we already had these fixed in our accounts before the year start. That's why I've highlighted um, 212,000 and, and added this amount here. The rest of it here, this is the total amount of vehicles. It's the 212,000 plus the 86 plus the 90. The total vehicles we had owned at any stage. Um, not really a relevant figure once you start selling. This here is the total depreciation before 2016, total depreciation for 2016, total depreciation for 2017. And this individual figures here are the total depreciation that we had on each vehicle that we sold. Uh, I'm going to get to that soon. So, uh, vehicles account. We've looked at this before for uh, land and buildings. Um, same thing for vehicles. Both of them are fixed assets. Land and buildings are fixed asset. Vehicles is a fixed asset. Therefore, the um, I suppose the handy thing about the fact that we've done land and buildings before is vehicles is the very very same. So this isn't new. So my vehicles is an asset account. Uh, did I have vehicles before 2016, before the question started? Yes, I did. There's a list of them here, plus the fridge, because we purchased the fridge in 2013 as well. Uh, so I need to find out how much those vehicles cost at the 1st of the 1st, 2016, and I've added them up previously. I've added up the figures that I had, the cost figures I had at the start of the year, and a total of 212,000. So that is my balance of the 1st of the 1st. 2016, 212,000. Now, what happened to my vehicle's account during 2016? Well, if we read this paragraph again here, vehicle number three was crashed and traded in. So I got rid of vehicle number three. How much did vehicle number three cost? Vehicle number three cost 74,000. So I got rid of it. So how do I show that I got rid of this vehicle worth 74,000? Because I started the year with 212,000 vehicles, I got rid of this guy here for 74,000, so I'm going to put it on the credit side, as we've done before. Disposal of vehicle number three, 74,000. That's on the credit side, because I'm reducing the amount of vehicles I have. What else happened? So, vehicle number three was crashed, traded in against a new vehicle, costing 86,000. So, I purchased a new vehicle, costing 86,000. We called that vehicle number four. So this vehicle number four was a new vehicle I purchased. Therefore, it added to the amount of vehicles that I owned. It increased the value of vehicles that I owned. So I'm going to put it on the debit side because I'm adding to my vehicles. So this is the vehicles we started with. This is the guy we sold. And this is vehicle number four that we bought. And that's obviously money that we paid out of our bank for vehicle number four. So how would I finish this account? Balance on both sides, 298,000. Two of this add up to 298. This is just 74. So I put in the missing figure here. The remaining difference at the end of the year is my balance carried down 224,000. And then it's my balance brought down. Same thing again, carried down here on the credit side, brought down here on the debit side. So the 224,000 is just a missing figure. And what that's telling it that what is what that's telling us is that we have 224,000 euro uh, in our vehicles account at the beginning of 2017. Now that's 2016 done for vehicles. 
the next account I need to look at is provision for depreciation. So I'm not going to look at, I have 2017 done here, but I've kind of uh, grayed out the uh, figures. When you're taking this down, you're going to need to, to leave space uh, to fit in 2017. You can see how many lines I needed there. Uh, but I also have to look at the provision for depreciation account and a disposal account. So again, for 2016, my provision for depreciation, what happened here? Well, my depreciation before the question starts the first of the first 2016, that's when we really start getting into the, the alterations. So I need to find out how much my total depreciation was before 2016. And if you look at this here, these are all the vehicles we had before 2016. This is the depreciation for 12, 13, 14, and 15. And we added all that up to find the total depreciation at the first of the first 16. For this vehicle, the total depreciation was 30,000. For the fridge, it was 16,500. For this guy here, vehicle number two, it was 28,050. And for vehicle number three, it was 13,875. We've already these figures added up, all of this little box here, and that was our totals. So how much was the total depreciation at the first of the first 16? Well, if I add up these four, I can see down here, it was 88,425. That's my total depreciation at the first of the first 16 for all of the vehicles I had at that time. So 88,425 is my total depreciation at the beginning of the year. How do I show that? Well, my depreciation account is a liability account, just like land and buildings. So my depreciation at the first of the first 2016 goes in the credit side because I'm adding to my liabilities and the total amount was 88,425. So I put that there. Now, what happened during 2016? So we can see up here again, during 2016, vehicle number three was crashed, traded in. That vehicle is gone. What did I do in the vehicles account? I took out its cost. What do I need to do in the depreciation account? I need to take out the depreciation for vehicle number three because it's gone now. So there's no point me counting up how much its depreciation was. This depreciation is now wiped for vehicle number three. So let's look at vehicle number three. That's the vehicle number three here, 74,000. That was depreciation for 14. That was the depreciation for 15. This was the depreciation before the year started. And we sold this vehicle a couple of months in 2016. So we had it for 16 as well. So that's a small amount of depreciation it had for 2016. So how do I know the total depreciation vehicle number three had when I sold it? Well, we've already added it up. 13,875, which is the subtotal for these two. So 13,875 plus 2775 is 16,650. So this 16,500 here, just over 16,500, is my total depreciation for vehicle number three. I'm looking at my depreciation account. I got rid of vehicle number three. It's gone. It's told I got rid of it. It was crashed and traded in. So I'm going to get rid of the depreciation that vehicle number three had. And that's the depreciation, 16,650. So I put it on the debit side because this is my depreciation I had for all my vehicles at the beginning of the year. I've sold this guy, so I want to get rid of the depreciation. So I put it on the opposite side, 16,650 on the debit side. Now, what else is happening? So for my depreciation, if you remember for land and buildings, We'd always have a depreciation at the beginning of the year. If we sold something, we'd have to take out the depreciation and put it on the debit side. And what else would we do? We'd calculate the depreciation for the year. And that's the P&L figure. And usually we do something like, you know, buildings 800,000 multiplied by 2% and then we get the whatever it was, 16,000 and we put it here. But we don't need to do that for the depreciation question. Why? Because I already know what my depreciation was for 2016 because I've done my depreciation for each vehicle for 2016 and I've added it up here at the bottom and I got 33,150 that is 2016 that's all the depreciation that happened that year and it's 33150 so what do I do I just put in 33,150 so that's my depreciation I had at the start the 88,425 the disposal was vehicle number three because it got rid of that in 2016. So all of the depreciation had to go. And then I find out, well, what was the depreciation for 2016? Because this is depreciation before 2016. 
this is the guy I got rid of, and this is the depreciation for that year. 33150. Now, if I add up both of the figures in the credit side, it comes to 121,575. And I've only got 16,650 here on the debit side. So once again, my balance carried down is just the missing figure. All I'm doing here is I'm looking and saying, well, both sides have to add up to the bigger figure, which is 121575, because this side is, adds up to that. This side only has 16,650. So in order to get this side to add up to 121,575, I need to put in the missing figure of 104,925. That's my balance carried down. Once again, balance carried down here on the debit side. I'm going to take the balance carried down and bring it to a balance brought down on the credit side. First to the first for the next year, 2017. Again, it's just the same figure. So we've looked at vehicles. We've looked at provision for depreciation. Again, I have only looked at 2016. I have 2017 to fit in as well. So I filled that in already, but I've left it. Um, I've left it in in grey so that we don't so we're not getting confused looking at that year as well. We'll look at that the next day. The only other thing I'm going to look at now because I'm focusing on 2016 is I need to do a disposal account. Remember for land and buildings, our, our previous topic that we'd have revaluation accounts and we'd have disposal accounts. If I revalue something, I have a revaluation account. If I dispose of something, I have a disposal account. Well, in 2016, we disposed of vehicle number three. And just like we've done before, we deal with it in the exact same manner. This is my disposal account. So where do I get all these figures? Well, if I look up at my account here for vehicles, have I anything got to do with disposal up here? On the credit side of the vehicles account, I have the cost. 74000 That was the cost of the vehicle I sold. It's called disposal. I've already called it disposal. It's on the credit side here. So what am I going to do with it? I'm going to put it on the debit side down here, 74,000. What about my depreciation? Did that de the vehicle I depreciate or it sold? Did it have any depreciation? Well, I've called it disposal again. This is my disposal for 2016 for vehicle number three, 16,650. It's on the debit side here, so I take it down to the credit side down here, 16,650. So now this is the cost of my uh, vehicle that I sold. This is the depreciation for the vehicle I sold. What other information do we have in the question? Now we start looking at the, the other part here. So vehicle number three was crashed and traded in, traded in against a new vehicle costing 86,000. The company received compensation to the value of 43,000. So the company received compensation. So obviously the vehicle was crashed, um, you know, they had whatever they had car insurance in, insurance in their their delivery truck or whatever it was um and they've received compensation for that for 43000 euro so they've received 43000 so this was the cost of the vehicle this was the depreciation it had and we've received compensation for 43000 euro after we crashed the vehicle so i'm going to put that in here as well I'm going to put that in here on the credit side and you'll always put it in on the credit side uh, because we're comparing it to the cost. If this was the cost, this is how much we originally purchased it for. Um, we'll eventually try to see that we make a profit or loss on it. So the compensation goes on the credit side. Um, and the only other thing we have here, the only other thing we're told is that the vehicle was, you know, originally cost 86,000. And the check or the, the new vehicle we cost, the new vehicle we cost was 86,000, but the check paid for the new vehicle was 65. So basically, if somebody goes off and buys a new car, and that car is worth 86,000 euro, but they only pay 65,000 because they only send a 65,000 euro check, what's after happening? Well, we've received the trade in value. So we've, we've crashed vehicle number three. The insurance company gave us 43,000 euro, but obviously the, you know, the vehicle probably wasn't completely destroyed. So when I took this vehicle back to the dealership, um, I'm trying to buy a new uh, vehicle. It's costing 86,000. I take in my old one and I trade it in, just as you would with any car. If you're trying to upgrade your car, you have a 2004 
uh, Toyota, you've had a for a couple of years, you know, you want to buy a Kia GM5, uh, we're going to help you. You're going to take in your old car to the garage and you're going to, um, obviously, a car dealership, you're going to put in your old car, buy a new one. You get maybe a 1,000, €1,500 trade in value for your old car. And that'll reduce the amount you have to pay for the new one. So that's all that was happening here. So the new vehicle originally cost 86,000, but I've only paid 65,000 for it. And the only reason I've reduced the amount that I've paid is because when I handed in my old vehicle, I got a trade in amount. And that trade in amount is the difference. So 86,000 minus 65,000. So again, the um, vehicle that we bought is worth 86,000 euro. But the vehicle I, I the check I paid, was 65,000 euro. New vehicle is worth 86, but you only pay 65,000. And the only uh, reason we have for that is because you receive the trade-in value. So you receive the discount because you're handing in an old vehicle, even though it was uh, partially uh, wrecked from a crash, we still receive 21,000 for it, trade-in. So I'm gonna put that on the credit side as well. My depreciation for the vehicle, the amount they receive for trading it in, and the amount of compensation I receive from the insurance company, all of that goes in. The total on the credit side is 80,650. Debit side is only 74,000, so what, do I, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna balance it out, and the difference is P&L. So the difference is profit and loss, and finding out whether you made a profit or loss, and in this case, we made a profit. We've made a profit from the vehicle, because the vehicle originally cost us 74,000, but between the depreciation reduction in value, the trade-in value I got for it, and the compensation from the insurance company, it totaled up to 80650 So we've received a profit of 6650 And that's just my balance on both sides. So that's the question done for 2016. This, this bottom part here is really your accounts that you're required to show. This is just a big table to help with the workings, and it does make it very easy. Um, so I have the vehicles done for 16. I have the depreciation done for 2016. And I have the disposal done for 2016. And we've only a few lines there uh, next week just to look at 2017. I've just created in the figures there. So you do need to leave, uh, leave a little bit of room. I want you to go to this question. You've already taken on in this in your notes copy before. And I want you to take down um, these accounts here uh, again into your notes copy uh, now just for this question.